were held in Cairo on Friday. Well, those are the main headlines. Now it's time for Our World. And this week, Zena Badawi goes to Greece, a country where cuts to the healthcare system mean some people are having to turn to charities to get their treatment. Athens, Greece, 2013. Six years of recession and four years of tough austerity measures have taken their toll on the nation's health. I have four children. Uh, my husband is uh, sick and uh, uh, Christo, I don't have work. I don't have possibility to pay uh, for uh, the doctor. It's a uh, problem. Many thousands of people are turning to charity for vital medical treatment. The state is failing them. We are in a crisis. We are in the beginning of a humanitarian crisis. So we are here in the same way we were in the third world because there are problems. I've come to Greece to find out how healthcare has been affected by austerity measures that have seen income slashed, taxes increased and unemployment rocket to nearly 30%. Is there now a health crisis that is literally costing lives? Katerina and Alexandros live in the north of Athens with their four boys. Christos, their second child, is seven. Six months ago, he was diagnosed with a rare illness called angioneurotic edema on the larynx, inherited from his father. This condition causes parts of the body to swell up, an attack can happen at any time and it can be life-threatening. Γιατί αν τα ιδίματα είναι στο πρόσωπο ή στο, στο πρόσωπο, λάριγγα και ό,τι τίποτε, μπορεί να μην είναι χωρίς mm. οξυγόνο και είναι πάρα πολύ επίγον και επικίνδυνο, και επικίνδυνο αυτή η πάτηση. Τον είχε νιώσει έτσι το Χρήστο και αφού είχε ζαλιστεί το παιδί, είχε μελανιάσει τόσο πολύ και τον πήραμε στα χέρια και πήγαμε στον πέδον πέρα και είχε μείνει δύο μέρες μέσα. Νικήσαμε τον κόβο. Χρήστος can suffer an attack several times a month. And when he does, he needs an injection costing 600 euros. Money his parents simply can no longer afford. Before the recession hit, like 97% of people in Greece, this family's healthcare needs were covered by work-related insurance, which met a large portion of their health bill. So, when they hit hard times and had to close down their cafe business two years ago, this couple not only lost their steady income, but their health insurance too. Τώρα πια δεν είναι, δηλαδή είμαστε οικονομικά χάλια, με δυσκολία εξασφαλίζουμε τα απαραίτητα το παιδιό μας, δηλαδή έχει αλλάξει τη η ζωή μας όλη, ο τρόπος της ζωής μας. Κάθε φορά αναγκάζουμε και λέω ψέμα πως είμαι ασφαλισμένη για να μπορώ να, να, μπορώ να κάνω χρήση τη χορήγηση της ένεσης που χρειάζεται εκείνη τη στιγμή. At their wit's end, the couple take Christos to this voluntary-run clinic in the south of Athens. They've come to see Dr. Georgos Fijas, who works at the clinic in his spare time from his regular job as a cardiologist. Dr. Vihas will try to get a local hospital to provide Christos free of charge with the injections he so desperately needs. Christos and his family are typical of the patients who are flocking in ever-increasing numbers to see Dr. Vihas and his colleagues. Δεν χρειάζεται να το πει κανεί, αρκεί να ρίξει μια ματιά στο κοινωνικό ιατρείο και να δει του ανθρώπου που είναι εδώ. Η, η κρίση τα τελευταία τρία χρόνια στον χώρο της υγείας στην Ελλάδα ε, ε, έχει πάρει διαστάσεις ανθρωπιστικής κρίσης. Υπάρχουν νεκροί, υπάρχουν άνθρωποι που έχουν υποστεί μη αναστρέψιμες βλάβες στην υγεία τους 
2025. This man could not afford his medication. I have diabetes. I come here to take my pharmacy. They give me. I can't buy a pharmacy 150 euros every month because I have the job. I have nothing. What would have happened if Dr. Vihas had not helped you? I'm dead. So is I'm dead. This couple couldn't get access to maternity care for the birth of their baby. I had a small business venture and unfortunately due to the crisis uh, we had to close the business and because of the fact that I'm uninsured um, the, even the public hospitals don't give you the opportunity to give birth to your child. Um, did they turn you away? Uh, they said that they have to pay money for this. When you said you couldn't pay, what did they say to you? They said uh, you have to. We cannot undertake delivery of a baby without you paying the money, the, the sum of money that you're supposed to pay because you're uninsured. It's quite incredible just how many people have come to depend on this community clinic. It's only been around for 18 months and yet now there are more than 9,000 people on the books and that number is growing practically by the day. This single mother is the sole carer for her bedridden, disabled daughter who's just been diagnosed with cancer. With no means of paying for treatment, she's come to the clinic for help. Dr. Vihas told me he has 12 cancer patients on his clinic's books who, because of financial worries, delay treatment and have jeopardized their own lives. Dr. Vihas's clinic is just one of around 40 community clinics that have sprung up across the country in the last 18 months. Alongside them are a growing number of clinics like this one west of Athens, run by established international charities, more used to operating in war zones and refugee camps than in European Union countries. In just one weekend, they see more than 150 children and give around 100 vaccinations. Why an NGO, an international NGO that used for years and years to walk abroad in third world has to return in home? Because we are in a crisis. We are in the beginning of a humanitarian crisis for the poorer people. I can just tell you that the numbers of the Greek who attend our clinics are five times up the last two years. So we are here in the same way we were in the third world because there are problems. So why is this basic preventative medicine being provided by a charity and not the state? The health sector in Greece has been hit by a triple whammy. The unemployed now have no health insurance and need free treatment. Greeks who previously used the private sector are now turning to the state as household incomes are squeezed. And spending cuts have drastically affected the ability of the National Health Service to deliver care. All this is the result of austerity, introduced four years ago as a condition of the 240 billion euro rescue package for Greece. The measures are deeply resented and have led to demonstrations like this across the country. Five years ago, public spending on health was at its height at more than 16 billion euros. It's now been slashed by a quarter and for hospitals that means government spending has been reduced by about 30%. Hospitals like Evangelismos General Hospital here in Athens are at the sharp end of medical care. Of course, they consume the largest portion of the health budget, but there have been reports of a shortage of supplies and staff in such hospitals, so I've come to find out more. Ilias Sioras has been a doctor here for 25 years. He's convinced that services are being affected because of the cuts. Και σιγά σιγά μειωνόντουσαν οι παροχέ μέχρι το 2008. Από το 2009 και μετά, με την κρίση, μειώθηκαν πάρα πολύ. Ο βαρύ τεχνολογικό εξοπλισμό που έχει κάνει ήδη απόσβεση είναι στον ιδιωτικό τομέα. 
ή έχουμε μεγαλύτερη προσέλευση. Πάνω από 20.000 κενές θέσεις νοσηλευτών και πάνω από 5.000 θέσεις γιατρών. I was invited to meet the man with overall responsibility for running Evangelismos. The chief executive here says he's managed to make all of his savings through efficiencies. Your spending was 159 million euros in 2009. The cuts have meant that it's gone right down to 103 million euros in 2012. Where did you lose that money? And have you not compromised patient care as a result, the quality? It's not the point of quality. We are trying to get the, the right uh, goods at the right price. This uh, creates because the suppliers have reduced the prices. Uh, we are uh, working more entrepreneurially uh, with them. But in the past, maybe we are not uh, analyzing what was going on. You don't have we staff were, we were, shortages? We were, we were, no, we were focusing more on the, on, the, on the goods, on the medical goods, but we were not evaluating how much we were spending. Now we, we evaluate everything. He denies the hospital has been left short of supplies. I can yeah. see syringes here. Right. I Somebody advocates that we don't have this. It has become very popular. Our gloves we don't have, something like this. So what this. is your conclusion then? Do you believe that there were savings to be made simply through efficiencies? We do. I told you that we do have everything. And, but can you uh, make the, the savings the yeah. through and efficiency, say, through efficiencies only, without compromising no, the service? Th there is not a compromise about the service, because I told you, it, we, we are responsible in order to give the high medical service to the patient. No compromise about Thank this. You. I wasn't allowed to speak to patients at this hospital, so there was no way of hearing whether they thought cost savings had affected their treatment. Back at Dr. Vihas's clinic, I met Leonidas, who was recently treated in another hospital. His story suggests that hospitals are increasingly making patients foot the bill for their own treatment. Two months ago, in severe pain, Leonidas came to Dr. Vihas for help. <laughs> Και την άλλη μέρα αποφασίσαμε να πάει σε ένα γιατρό γιατί νόμιζε ο Λεωνίδας ότι μπορεί να έχει πάθει ένα έφραγμα. But in fact, Leonidas had an aneurysm or ballooning of his lower aorta. Dr. Vihas concluded he needed an emergency operation. Despite working all his life, Leonidas has no health insurance because he owes money to the tax office. Δεν παίρνω ούτε σύνταξη, ούτε έχω ασφάλεια. Γι' αυτό καταλήξαμε εδώ και με ο γιατρός και με βοήθησε να πάω να κάνω αυτή την εγχείρηση. After his surgery, to recover their costs, the hospital sent Leonidas a bill for 6,000 euros. When he couldn't pay, the debt was transferred to his tax bill, which meant the authorities could take legal action against him. Η περίπτωση του κυρίου Λεωνίδα είναι μία περίπτωση τυπική και εάν δεν υπάρξει η κατάλληλη δημοσιότητα, πάλι θα κληθούν αυτοί οι ασθενείς να πληρώσουν. Εμείς αυτό που θα κάνουμε είναι σε κάθε περίπτωση που προκύπτει να παλεύουμε, αλλά δεν είναι αυτή η λύση. Η λύση είναι η ίδια η πολιτεία να ανοίξει τις πόρτες στο δημόσιο σύστημα υγείας, κυρίως σε ασθενείς που κινδυνεύουν η ζωή τους. The state used to treat people like Leonidas free of charge. But pressure on hospital budgets means they increasingly enforce the rules. Back at Evangelismos Hospital, I asked Dr. Sioras what he does when a patient cannot pay for treatment. We try to help them against the law. Have you broken the law? Yes, many times. Every day I broke the law because I never ask uh, insurance for any patient. It's not just budget cuts that have put pressure on health services. The stress of unemployment and money worries also takes its toll on people's mental health. And that further increases demand on the health system. 
I want to get an idea of what the situation is like for people outside of the city of Athens. So I've gone along the highway and gone south of Athens to come here to Perama. Now this is an area where most people used to work in the shipbuilding industry, but now unemployment is very high here. 59-year-old Yorgos has been out of work for four years since he lost his job as an airline baggage handler. Do you think you'll ever work again? Yorgos receives no health insurance and no income. He's now completely dependent on an international charity and not just for medical treatment. Today he's come to pick up medication and a food parcel for himself and his wife. His desperate circumstances have left Yorgos needing psychological treatment and support as well. It's very difficult for him and his wife. Uh, now at their home they don't have electricity. And has this had an effect on them psychologically? Of course, of course. They don't hope uh, at anything. What kind of help can you give them? I mean, do you provide some kind of psychotherapy? We have here at the program of five psychologists that they see people uh, who need psychological um, help. For some, such stress can be too much to bear. I've come to see an old friend who works day and night to help those who are suffering from stress. He runs Greece's first dedicated suicide prevention helpline. Unfortunately, we have concrete evidence that the financial crisis uh, has caused a tremendous blow on people's mental health in the country. That is so Although the numbers are small, suicide figures in Greece have risen by 25%. What kind of people get in touch with you and typically what are the problems that they talk about? We see that we have many, many more suicides amongst men and that is so because society does put pressure on men to fulfill particular traditional roles of the provider, of the uh, protector, of the one who is able to make it. Greek society does not uh, really forgive flaws to men, especially when they have families. Aris, I've known you for many years. Did you ever think we'd be having this conversation? No. No, Zainab. No, I would never, ever think when we first met that we would be in Athens talking about Greeks killing themselves just because they cannot make ends meet anymore. I want to know if politicians and policy makers are aware of the impact of austerity on health. Professor Lycurgus Learopoulos sat on the committee that monitored progress of the Greek government in meeting targets set by the European Union, the European Commission and the IMF known as the Troika. But he resigned last year. The main failing you know, of the government, they didn't realize, and the Troika, that when you have a system that depends, where, where insurance, health insurance, access to care depends on whether you're employed or not, and you have 30% unemployment, you're creating a huge bomb, you know, which in fact has exploded. Why did you resign? Because I didn't think that the negotiation was going uh, the way it should. I think that there was too much emphasis on meeting some targets and not too much uh, emphasis on what would happen to the Greek people. Armed with sufficient evidence of a health crisis, I felt it was time to take my concerns to the Ministry of Health in Athens. Is it the case that anybody in Greece who cannot afford 
to buy necessary drugs from the pharmacist or who needs an operation if they cannot afford to pay that the state will provide the adequate care. Κύριε Μπεντάουι, στην Ελλάδα οι Έλληνε το μεγαλύτερο ποσοστό είναι ασφαλισμένοι από δημόσιο φορέα. Υπάρχουν άνθρωποι οι οποίοι δεν έχουν πληρώσει το ασφαλιστικό του σύστημα, διότι δεν είχαν τα χρήματα, διότι ήταν ε, κάτω από δύσκολη κατάσταση οικονομική. Αυτό με απόφαση τη κυβέρνηση δεν έχει επηρεάσει την νοσηλεία του και τη θεραπεία του στο εθνικό σύστημα υγεία. I've met one elderly man who needed a life-saving operation. He got it. But it cost him 6,000 euros. The hospital was pursuing him for payment, that it was causing him and his family a great deal of stress. Do you accept that that kind of case is going on and he is perhaps one of many? Δεν υπάρχει περίπτωση τέτοια. Δεν υπάρχει κάποιο που να πάει στο Εθνικό Σύστημα Υγεία και να πληρώσει χρήματα. The fact that there is an increasing number of community clinics from a handful last year to now nearly 40 would show that there is a greater need on the part of the people for such free voluntary services. Θα έλεγα ότι το βλέπω διαφορετικά. Υπάρχει η προσπάθεια του κόσμου να βοηθήσει ο ένα τον άλλον. Αυτά είναι στοιχεία μια κοινωνία η οποία λειτουργεί κάτω από συνθήκε λιτότητα και δυσκολία. Αυτά είναι θετικά στοιχεία μιας ενός πολιτισμού και μιας κοινωνίας, όχι διάλυσης. It seems to me that the government still does not sufficiently recognize the health risks being brought about by its austerity measures. Another striking example is that in the last three years, Médecins Sans Frontières have dealt with outbreaks of a disease eradicated 40 years ago, malaria. Spraying areas where mosquitoes are found can control the disease, but spraying has been disrupted by government spending cuts. In 2011, we had 57 cases uh, of malaria in the region of Laconia. Also, we had uh, a very few cases, but they were indicative around the uh, Attica zone, it's around Athens. And in 2012, also we had new cases in, in, in Karditsa and even up to the north. So can you say that malaria is now endemic again in Greece? No, malaria is not endemic yet in Greece. Uh, the, um, if this year we we'll get more cases of locally acquired malaria in the region of Laconia, then we can talk about it. How many more cases? Three more cases. So you just need three more locally acquired cases of malaria before Greece is once more declared as a country where malaria is endemic? Yeah, three more cases of locally acquired malaria. So while a disease like malaria raises public health concerns, it's ironic that in 2011 the Greek government underspent on its health budget. Professor Liaropoulos believes it's high time to loosen the purse strings. So your message now to the Troika is we have not only met but exceeded the cut that you demanded oh, yes, on the health yes, budget. Yes, well, Please may we have perhaps another half a billion euros back that we can spend on health care well, in to fact, on prevent a, a on crisis. A, yes, absolutely. And on a matter like this, I wouldn't even ask the Troika. I would simply just go ahead and do it. Because, you know, it's important. It's important for the health of the Greek people. You know, the Greek population is in danger right now. I asked the health ministry official whether the Greek government is now intending to increase spending on health care. Θα έλεγα είμαστε στην καμπή στην οποία πραγματικά θα υπάρξει αύξηση του εισοδήματος μέσα στα πλαίσια των δαπανών της υγείας έτσι ώστε κεντρικά από την κυβέρνηση ώστε ακόμη καλύτερα να λειτουργήσει το εθνικό σύστημα υγείας. But this is little comfort for people like Katerina and her family. She needs to know that when her son Christos next has an attack of edema, he can get the medication he needs. That certainty of care is not something Greeks like little Christos can count on in the current climate. Did you imagine that you would be in this situation in Greece? Did you no, imagine? No, never. I don't imagine this, this situation, here, situation here in Greece. It's very bad now. Very bad. I am uh, trauma, trauma, uh, uh, um, traumatized. Yes. How does that make you feel as a mother? I don't know. I feel very, very bad for the government, for the uh, because it don't help. I have four children. Uh, my husband is uh, sex and uh, uh, Christo. I don't have work. It's my uh, heart. It's uh, problem. 
Back at the community clinic in South Athens, Dr. Vihas has good news for Leonidas and his wife. The hospital has finally agreed to cancel the 6,000 euros they were charging him for his operation thanks to the determined campaign of Dr. Vihas and his team of volunteers. A happy outcome, but with one in four Greeks at risk of poverty today, Dr. Vihas sees no end in sight. Αυτό που διαπίστωσα με λύπη μου είναι ότι μετά την επιτυχία που είχαμε με τον κύριο Λεωνίδα, σε μένα προσωπικά δεν λειτουργήσε τόσο πολύ θετικά όσο θα έπρεπε. Και όταν το σκέφτηκα, κατάλαβα γιατί. Γιατί αυτό που αντιμετωπίζουμε εδώ είναι σαν τη Λερναία Ήδρα και τον Ηρακλή. Εκεί που κόβει ένα κεφάλι και νομίζει ότι κάτι έχει κάνει, ξεφυτρώνουν άλλα 4-5. Και αυτό είναι που δημιουργεί όλη τη θλίψη. No doubt many of us are going to be making the most of the uh, the sunshine this weekend. Enjoy it. A lot of us love the sunshine. Many of us don't. It's not going to be quite so hot across the, the north of the UK. For example, on Friday, temperatures in many areas were in the high 20s, just shy of 30 degrees in a few areas. But what's going to happen now is the temperatures across northern parts of the UK will drop a little bit across the south of the country, especially the southeast, they'll significantly rise, especially London and some of those coastal districts along the English Channel coast. Now already first thing in the morning, so five, six o'clock, we're talking about 17, 18 degrees across many of these southern and central areas. In the north, a little bit fresher and also fresher because there'll be a bit more cloud here as well. So we're talking about broken cloud across Scotland and also Northern Ireland. But for the rest of the UK, it really is plenty of sunshine and the hot sunshine, particularly hot sunshine across the south and the southeast. And there'll be some showers and thunderstorms developing too. I'll show them, show them to you in just a second. But I don't think it'll be too hot across Cornwall and Devon, say the mid-20s, warm enough. But as far as, say, from around about Bournemouth through Southampton, Brighton into the London area, Surrey, Berkshire, in this area, we could even get 32, possibly even 33 degrees. It's been a while and such will be the heat that there will be some showers and thunderstorms developing almost anywhere from the London area into Lincolnshire. They'll be very isolated. Most of us will miss them, but don't be surprised if you're caught in a downpour. Newcastle, much cooler on Saturday, much cooler in Edinburgh and certainly on the fresh side in Stornoway, relatively speaking, we're talking around 14 degrees. But in uh, eastern Scotland, of course, we've got the T20, it's the 20th anniversary. Uh, the weather's looking absolutely fine both on Saturday and Sunday. In fact, Sunday probably will be a little bit uh, uh, warmer. So how are we doing compared to the rest of Europe? Well, really, just like the Mediterranean, in London at least 30 degrees, uh, if not more, but Madrid 33 degrees. Uh, it's not quite so hot even in some spots across the, uh, the Balkans. So well and truly summer full throttle across the UK. Now the computer's predicting that the temperatures will probably dip a little bit by the time we get to Sunday. See, it's indicating 27 in London, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually around 30 degrees once again. And the high pressure is bringing the good weather. It's extending all the way from the Azores. It's called the Azores High. And for as long as this high pressure is here, it's going to keep all of that rainfall and the weather fronts at bay out in the Atlantic, which bring the fresher weather. But uh, right through Tuesday and beyond, sunshine, sunshine and more sunshine.
Good morning. This is Brett.